been three years since the LEGO movie, and now we're getting all sorts of LEGO films. Aside from the direct sequel, there's a film based on the Ninjago line later this year, which seems like a bit of an odd choice. Will it have the same appeal for adults that the LEGO movie did? Hard to say. But before that, we have the LEGO Batman movie, and easily one of the best looking anime features of 2017 only a month in. The LEGO movie gave us a great take on The Dark Knight, with Will Arnett's self-amused gravelly performance alongside the writing, making for a Batman that mocks the gravelly Christian Bale Batman. But he also had layers to his mocking sarcastic humour that elevated him to a legitimately great character too. So, a feature and take on that Batman certainly has potential, and the trailers have done a wonder in selling it. I haven't seen animated films trailers get laughs from all audiences this consistently in a long time, and with everyone and their mother dissatisfied, to say the least, with the recent films of the DC Universe, the world certainly seems ready for a different take on the Cape Crusader. Obviously the film doesn't have the novelty of the Lego Movie, a trade share with all follow-ups, but it was what made the Lego Movie such a well-loved hit. But this may offer something else that flick doesn't. So let's take apart this Batman. It should be mentioned that it has no connection to the Lego Movie beyond the titular character and everything being made of Lego, which is a good thing, I think. So. This macho, self-regarding Dark Knight is pretty content to remain alone in his Batcave when he's not disposing of the rogues of Gotham. Unsurprisingly, his solitude is challenged, first by his accidental adoption of a wide-eyed orphan, the future Robin, and then by new police commissioner, Barbara Gordon, and a cooperative approach to crime that runs counter to Batman's one-man approach. And alongside that, the Joker, stunned by Batman's indifference to their ongoing rivalry, hatches a grand plan to finally get his attention. Let me clarify, the film doesn't have the heart or the depth of the Lego movie, where the third act twist informed the whole flick in such a pleasingly conceptual way, but if you're among the group of people who didn't like the direction that film took with its twist, you may prefer this film. Either way, it makes up for it by being relentlessly, consistently funny. There's a truckload of in-jokes here, from political subversion to the odd live action clip that works far better than it sounds. But mostly it pokes light fun at other fiction, obviously other DC superheroes, but there's also amusement in the depth of Batman's rogues gallery, ranging from the instantly recognisable, like Harley Quinn and Bane, down to throwaway forgotten loons, several making cameos from the 60s Batman series. Indeed, Batman fans will have a field day with how the film dives into his lore. Thankfully, unlike other super for year films of today, the only canon that matters is the film's own, and you need know no more than the Batman facts that have saturated pop culture to remain delighted. Many of the best gags mock something specific about Batman's history in such a way that even the uninformed will get the joke. The film riffs on other pop culture characters later on, even if, much like the cameos in the Lego movie, nearly all of them are properties under the command of Warner. Before I get ahead of myself, I should clarify that the film doesn't succeed quite as well at being a parody that is also an exemplar of the thing being parodied, but the two don't end up meshing as well the whole time. There are a few plot points that would seem ripe for satirising the way Batman's lore is trout, but such points remain uncommented on. And the side characters get close to iconic treatment without getting quite all the way there. Robin's an excited hyperactive child, but not as delightful as the sugary embodiment of children's playtime that was Unikitty. This Joker is wacky and madcap, but not as distinctive as he could have been. And much like Wildstyle, Barbara Gordon suffers from being marginally underwritten. That's twice that's happened to the only main female character. Visually, there's not a whole lot to say, for the film's look hasn't changed for the LEGO movie bar minor tweaks and the natural evolution of animation technology. And if I'm being honest, the visuals aren't as special here as they were there, with far less shots highlighting deliberate imperfectations in the LEGO pieces. That's alongside a greater quantity of frantic action set pieces, which tend to feel less like simulated LEGO stop motion and more like ordinary animated action par for the course. But the film's look and oftentimes outrageously random physics still works for all the reasons it did before, and there's more than enough inspired design choices and flourishes in the animation to compensate. I'm especially fond of the fresh suits worn by Robin and Alfred Trout. There's no denying the film gets marginally less funny as it goes on, and much like the Lego movie, some trimming here and there, especially in the middle, would be quite welcome. And the fact that everyone and everything is made of Lego matters little outside of scattered moments where vehicles are assembled. But these are mostly quibbles, for the file flick is still a delightful romp. The star-studded cast has a wild time, with Ralph Fiennes Alfred Pennyworth being especially on point. Story and characters work well enough and leave the film with a satisfying emotional core. If you're like me and are long since tired of the superhero drought we're in that seems to have no end in sight, this film is just what you need. 
And while the issues I mentioned will potentially leave the film with a lower rewatch value outside of Batman aficionados than the Lego movie, there's no denying this still hits the same wide grain quality, by and large. As long as these Lego films can continue being this delightful, hey, more power to those bricks. Thanks for watching the review, folks. As always, I'm your host, Mike Culligan of Cartoon Karma. If you like what you saw, leave a like or a comment. That'd be pretty neat. Subscribing will be even neater. Or you can check out my other videos, where I cover animation of all shapes and sizes. Perhaps even follow the channel on Facebook and Twitter. All your choice, but it sure brings a smile to my face. Until next time, folks.